Welcome to vlog 8 of Building War Machine 3. I'm walking to work today. I got tired of the subway. Today I'm gonna fix my bike and also progress on the music timing meter. Summer have hit the city and I'm taking a more chill day. The last seven days have been one of the most intense in my day. So I was like, yesterday when I stopped working at midnight, I was like, tomorrow is a chill day. So today we're gonna chill design some gears. Cheers everyone. That's where I'll accept my Nobel Prize for marble machines. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to design. The music tightness meter. When the drumstick hits the green, the music is tight. And I'm designing this gear down here. And I was always thinking about that we should have a pointer that points like this, like the drumstick. But I have a new idea for that. And that's what I'm going to design now. So let's head over to Onshape here. Because of the design, I don't really want to have a pointer that goes outside the perimeter of this big gear. So instead of a pointer, I'm going to make one of these spokes the pointer instead. I'm going to use the sketch of the spokes uh, by hitting U for use. And then I'm going to make a circle as always almost like a moon clock, you know, that, that has a moon going around that shows the half moon. And my idea is that when this moon is perfectly within a circle, then the music is tight. I want to make this very, very clearly visible so I can see it on a dark stage. That looks pretty cool. A little sundial. Nice. Okay, I've been riding the subway in Stockholm the last week because I had a puncture here on the back wheel. Let's fix that. I become a happier person when I'm riding bikes. I remember fixing my first puncture as a kid, like doing it myself without my father helping me with the tire. I was immeasurably proud. It was such an awesome thing. At this point of a puncture fixture, when you're trying to fiddle with the empty tube to get it in, the trick is to give it just a bit of air, because when it has some air, it's much easier to get it into the wheel correctly. And now for the last step, when you're snapping over the tire, when the tube has some air in it, the tools will never pinch the tube. Great tip. And the puncture is fixed. Maiden voyage. So far, so good. Awesome. Okay, let's see how the print went. It looked great on the time lapse. Oh, that looks good. The support just stayed on the build plate. That's nice. And the supported surface looks really good. We have the hub, let's assemble some cool parts in the uniform. So let's check the bearing. Oh, the bearing clicks in. That's nice. So we have... Okay, this was an early one with two small holes. Let's put that aside. So we have six of those. Then I have these support pieces. So then we have six of those. So when breaking off supports from these PPA carbon fiber filament parts, I'm using nitrile gloves just to not have the carbon fiber strands into my skin. I think that's a good precaution. It's tempting to sand this support surface, but people generally do agree on that sanding carbon fiber components requires a lot of caution. So I'm just going to break off the support and I'm not going to sand down this surface for now. So now the fun begins. We can take a middle section and we can take an outside section and we can start putting them together like that. It takes the shape of a wheel. So then we have the spokes. There's a spoke that goes perfect in there. Boom, another middle section. Oh, that looks nice. So here's the screws I bought at Sieverts in a previous vlog. 
we're getting somewhere. After a lot of days designing this assembly, it's so fun to seeing the first huge gear come together. And I kind of like making these segmented gears on a small printer. It's segmented just because the printer is too small to print the whole thing in one go. It feels like I'm building my own Technic Lego uh, model, basically. So, so yeah, everything went together really nicely. Let's take a closer look at this. All right. It starts to look like a gear. So it's holding together pretty well without the hub. The hub goes in like so. And then the spacers is on this side. This is really so much fun seeing it come to life like this. And this is only the first gear of uh, five. I have these locked nuts in there already. So that's a nice feeling. I can feel how the whole thing pulls itself together. Ah yeah, it's rock solid. Okay, all the spokes are on and we have the special eye spoke, we have the eye lifter spoke and we have the bell hitter lifter spoke. So there's some functionality in here. Here's the hub and the bearing clicks in and then uh, we're just gonna do a test assembly of this. Oof, the shoulder bolt feels so great. I'm gonna have a bearing cap here, I'm printing that now. Then if we turn around. That <laughs> is nice. It's mesmerizing just sitting here and watching it actually being so silent. These screws will hold down some bearing lids. Let's go to the printer and see if they're done. Is the support staying on the plate? Oh, they are. Yes. So these auto supports are actually doing a great job. And here's a clean surface that will push on the bearing. These prints look great. Clean print bed, so I can start the next print. Okay, my friends, let's take a moment of Zen together here and place these nuts into these beautiful bestagons because you know that hexagons are the bestagons <laughs> I'm trying to make this satisfying it went so well on the first Let's nail the last. <laughs> okay, so that was the moment of sun. So then we have its little friend here from the other side. Where we're gonna use these socket cap screws. Nice. So the bearing plate has this ridge here, which means that when we push them on, the ridge will push only on the outer ring of the bearing here. And so now on this side, all the lock nuts. This is mega overkill, but it's beautiful and fun. So before pushing really close, I'm gonna put the socket bolt in and see if it can meet the second bearing. Oh yes, nice. So I could tighten all these now, but I'm actually not going to do that because the part I'm printing is going on the middle of this bolt. Rumor that the final part is ready and the shoulder bolt is going to get some company here. Whoops. Oh, the clearance is perfect. I've been printing with this PC material for a while and now I can kind of know the tolerance is needed. The clearance is perfect. Okay, so the reason for this part is a bit convoluted. Let's talk about it. So in the final assembly, we have three pivots. We have the pivot down here, we have here and down here. 
The new design I'm making, I don't want to have a backing board like this. I want to keep it open so the audience can see it as nicely as I can. So I need to clamp the frame with the shoulder bolt that is the pivot through the gear. So I want to apply a lot of clamping force through this bolt and on the bearings. The clamping force from the bolt will happen on the inner ring of the bearings. But then imagine if we only do it like this, so that we clamp in like this on the inner ring of the bearing and then the resistance from the hub is only on the outer side of the bearing. We're basically trying to destroy the bearing. We're distorting the bearing and it's not nice for the bearing to have that axial load like that. This part is meant to offset that axial load. By taking this sleeve and adding it inside of the bearing, we can transfer force from the inner ring through this piece onto the next inner ring. So if we're clamping hard here on the inner ring of the bearing, the force is translated through the sleeve and to the other inner ring and the outer ring doesn't experience this distortion. So with 3D printing, the tolerances are not really there to make this perfect, but the design intent is there. So I think it's a good, it's a good thing to keep in mind. So, so sleeve goes in there and now we can put the bearing on. And now I can shut the bearing lids around this assembly. I'm gonna start with only two bolts for now. And right there it's finished. Uh, the first part of this assembly is finished. Is it turning straight? It's very straight actually. It's 3D printing so I can see a tiny wobble in the height direction. The precision is not near those of real helical metal gears but it's absolutely fine for, for this and we're going to have a lot of um, backlash on the gears interacting. All right. So did we get closer to the world tour? No, <laughs> to be honest. This project makes sense in a lot of ways and it's a good process for me, but it's a process. It's not like doing giant leaps closer to the world tour. I think for this project, we will never get above six. Did I have fun? Yes. It's kind of, uh, no inflation, it's, it's here. It was the best day that hasn't been a moving day. So that's nice. Eventually, this little notch right here is going to ring this bell. That is going to be <laughs> really funny, actually. Anyway, I do think that I have done good things. The last week has been peak chaos and I think we're over it and I feel my concentration is getting back into the design and I hope to be more and more efficient as this series goes. And anyway, I'm really happy that you're with me on this journey and thank you to all the backers who are producing this extra content. See you on the next one.